الأطهار الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفاج صدق الله العلي العظيم Brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم وانطقني بالهدى وألهمن التقوى ووفقني للتي هي أزكى والله make my speech be guidance inspire me with piety and fear of you Allah and give me success in that which is most pure another beautiful three segments of Dua Makaram Al-Akhlaq by our fourth Imam Imam Zain Al-Abidin alayhi salam which the first segment of today's discussion goes back again about speech and our usage of our verbal ability that where it should be and how it should be and the dua that I think a lot of our parents a lot of us parents we are in need of it many times we have this question how can we make sure that our kids are on the right path Shaykh how can I keep my kids on the right path I keep talking with them but they don't listen they don't obey me it shows that my discussion my speech my talk it's not having any influence on him the more I try to guide him verbally it's not having any effect on it is there anything to do of course one important thing that we said and we will say and we continue saying it's dua 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 supplication Imam is saying in this first segment of today's discussion Allahumma wa antiqni bil huda oh Allah make my speech be guidance it is not me who guides people it's not even Rasulullah who guides people it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who guides people we are the means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to put guidance in my speech it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that puts cure in the medicine that the doctor prescribes for me. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to go back to Allah. Oh Allah, I as a parent, I'm advising my children, I'm advising my friends, my relatives, my spouse. I try to advise them, I try to guide them verbally, telling them something. Oh Allah, you put in my speech guidance for them. And you see sometimes it has a lot happened to me myself when I become mindful of my talk sometimes I see or actually majority of times I see th examples that I bring and points that I discuss it's not my own it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who put that example in my mind and in my heart that speech that sentences that I uttered and that becomes influence to other people we say things and we move on but we have to be careful. Are we inspiring toward good or toward evil? I give you an example of my own life. That we can see how much a couple of words can have influence and how much reward we can get with a couple of words. A friend of mine, a convert, we met many, many, many years ago. And he told me, Sheikh, I'm trying to compile, pay attention. Compile the stories of the martyrdom of Ahlul Bayt, Masa'ib of Ahlul Bayt, the tragedies of Ahlul Bayt, starting from Rasulullah in English. He said, We read it from different books, we hear it within different lectures, but I want to make it into one book. The tragedies of Rasulullah, tragedies of Amir Mu'mineen, tragedies of Fatima to Zahra, tragedies of Imam Hassan al Mushtawa and Imam Hussein, at least Ashab al Kisa, compile them in one book. I heard it. After a year or two, him and I, we went to Karbala together. And we started walking from Najaf to Karbala. May Allah reward us 
by the blessing of these days to go to Karbala, insha'Allah, every year, every year, every year, insha'Allah. We're walking from Najaf to Karbala. You know, we have a company, let's have a discussion. I ask him, how, uh, how is it coming with you, the book that you're trying to compile together? He's like, Shaykh, I'm working on it. That's it. I said, make sure you work on it and make sure you put it together. That is it, to have a discussion. After a year or two, the book was compiled and the book was published and it is published. It is spread around. Thousands and thousands of people are buying this book and they're reading it in English. The Sacrifice of Ahl al-Bayt, I believe, is the title of the book. One day after three, four years of discussion, he's like, Sheikh, do you know what pushed me to move forward and publish and make sure I put the effort to finish this book? Alaykum as -salam. I told him, no. He said, I, it was in my mind, I was putting it together, but every week or two, maybe a page or two. But after we're dis our discussion our, from Najaf to Karbala, you told me, I thought to myself, Sheikh is going to come back, ask me about within six months. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to tell him, okay, I'm still working on it. He said, your words put the emphasis on my efforts and I worked on it within three to six months or so, I put it together and I published it. Inshallah, if my, my intention is pure and sincere toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I was able to guide him. Again, the willing of Allah, nothing from me, the blessings all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt, that they put this word in my tongue and my words, and I gave it to him and I delivered it and I inspired him. He published the book. So everybody who reads that book, Inshallah, by the blessing of Allah, I get the thawab. That is the meaning of Allahumma wa antaqni bil huda. Wa Allah, make my speech to be guidance toward people. If we keep asking, at least we read this dua, makaram al akhlaq once a month, at least, if not once a week, and we think of these phrases, these segments of the duas. And inshallah, five books that we have talked about, and we're going to keep reminding ourselves. The first book is. Asul Kafi. Second book, Nahjul Fasaha. Thank you, sister. Third book, Sahifa Sajadiyya. Rasalat al Hukuk of Mamzer Abidin and Tuhaf al Uqul. When we read these books, for example, Sahifa Sajadiyya, when we read Dua, when we read it, I should pay attention to it. Read the Arabic verse. And then read the English translation and thinking it that, okay, Allah is saying, Imam is saying to say to Allah, Oh Allah, make my speech be guidance. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is guiding people. Oh Allah, please help me. I'm trying to convince my wife. I'm trying to convince my husband. I'm trying to convince my brother. I'm trying to convince my sister. Alaykum salam. I'm trying to convince a relative, a co-worker, a friend, my children, my parents, whomever. I'm trying to guide them. Oh Allah, put that guidance in my talk, in my speech. Coming back to the speech and the problems with speech that needs practice. That we only should talk about things that relate to us. Either we can benefit or by saying this, there is benefit in us. Other than that, it needs practice. Is it easy? No. Is it difficult? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. To control our speech and to say only things that are beneficial either to me or to the person who I'm telling it. If not, there's a saying that if speaking it's from silver, the nature of speaking is from silver, being silent is from gold. Who will change, exchange silver with gold? So if speaking gets us rewards as a silver, being silent, it's gold. Hadith says that unless a man hasn't spoken yet, his wisdom and his ignorance is hidden. When he talks, either he is showing a wisdom or ignorance, so it's a 50-50. If I'm not sure this is a wisdom or ignorance, why should I say it? Unless I have proved that what I'm about to say, it's wisdom. It's good word. If not, that puts me in trouble. Where do we learn this? A hadith by the master of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Another loud salawat. Oh,
See, I'm keep reminding you about now salawat, now salawat. I have to keep reminding you. It's been 30 days. I have to keep reminding and reminding and reminding, inshallah. After a couple of years, inshallah, when we hear the names of Ahlul Bayt, we will say loud salawat, inshallah. Man kathara kalamuhu kathara khata'ahu. The one whose speech and the amount of words that he utters increases, his mistakes also increases. The more I speak, the more I, it's possible for me to make mistakes and have sin. وَمَنْ كَثُرَ خَطَأُهُ قَلَّ حَيَاؤُهُ And the one whose mistakes increases, his modesty and haya decreases. وَمَنْ قَلَّ حَيَاؤُهُ قَلَّ وَرَعَهُ And the one whose modesty decreases, his piety and God-fearing's personality also decreases. وَمَنْ قَلَّ وَرَعَهُ مَا تَقَلْبُهُ and the one whose piety and God's fearing personality decreases, his heart dies. And the one whose heart dies, he enters hellfire. The amount of talk that we talk. How much I need to practice on a daily basis to say things that are worthy of being said. If not, this hadith applies to me. The more I talk, the more I make, I make mistakes. The more I make mistakes, my modesty decreases. The more my modesty decreases, my piety decreases. The more my piety decreases, the more my heart dies. And the, my, then when my heart dies, I enter hellfire. Then why should I talk if I don't have to talk? Why should I? Anybody will pay me if I talk? Well, actually, I do get paid when I talk. But typically, we don't. Typically, we don't get paid for talking. So Imam says, don't increase. Only say things that are worthy of being said. There is benefit for you in dunya and akhirah, or there is benefit for the other person in dunya and akhirah. Even amr bil ma'roof an nahi wa an nahi an al-munkar. One of the conditions of encouraging good and discouraging evil, it is that if you give the possibility that by me saying it, he or she will have Apply it. Oh, they will apply it. If not, it's not wajib for you to do, encourage good and discourage of evil. If I know that this moment, this time, my talk will not have an effect, I should not encourage good and discourage evil. There's no benefit. I might make it even worse. But me, not knowing the circumstances, where should I, when should I talk and when should I be silenced, I talk in a place that I'm supposed not to talk, and I make the scenarios even worse and worse and worse. I give you one rule of thumb. When something is happening, a problem is happening, a haram is happening, at the time of that incident, don't try to stop it. You make it worse. Unless it's in a couple of places, I will talk about it. When a person is angry and has rage, I saw one of my relatives, his, her daughter was screaming, and she was screaming, I'm telling you, don't scream. It's not going to have an effect. You're already screaming. You are fueling the rage of your children. That moment, you have to be completely shut down. Get ready when that person comes down, and then right now, after five minutes, ten minutes, one hour, two hours, this is the way we shouldn't have a conversation. You should not scream. You should not raise your voice. Unless it's ghibah, gossiping. Brother, sister, please don't gossip. Oh, it's not gossip, it's the truth. I know it's the truth. Since it's the truth, it's gossip. If it's not the truth, it's accusation. I'm, I'm still, I think I have to back, go back. Either one day just bring that lecture of mine from last year that we talked about ghibah. Ghibah is something that somebody has done, but doesn't like for other people to hear about it. And you tell that, and even though that person did it, as ghiba. If it's not as accusation, it's tuhma. It's even worse than ghiba. Brother, please, sister, don't. Don't gossip. He's not going to like it, Sheikh, if I tell them don't gossip. Okay, don't let them like it. Doesn't matter. This is the place that we have to stop the sin because we are getting involved in it. Us hearing the ghiba, we are getting involved in it. If not, let that incident finish. And then have a conversation at the time that you think it will have effect. Oh Allah, 
put guidance into my speech. I want to guide people. It is Allah who puts guidance. Another beautiful hadith from Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. قال رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وآله من حسن إسلام إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني a sign of a good Muslim according to this hadith what is if I come to you and I tell you what is the sign of a good Muslim some will say شيخ his salah some will say his zakat some will say the way he does hajj some will say the way he pays charity everybody will say it's different Rasulullah says Min husna islam al mar a sign of a good Muslim tarkuhu ma la ya'ni leaving whatever it doesn't relate to him verbally and action two people are talking three people are talking has nothing to do with me but I want to be involved in this discussion I get in there let's just have a discussion I don't have one sign of a good Muslim that I supposed to have by the teaching of the person who I say I have I am submitting to him he say you don't have that one sign of a good Muslim tarkuhu leaving ma la ya'ni it doesn't have nothing to do with it leave it why you get involved why do I get involved why what is the benefit is there any reward if I can add an influence of course they ask me question and I know the answer and it's the truth. I can guide them. Sure. It can, if I can prevent a harm to someone. Sure. If not, Tarkuhu ma la yani Habibi, leave him alone. Leave him alone. If it doesn't matter to me, if it doesn't relate to me, if it's nothing that I should have concern of, why should I get involved? And we get involved in one thing, we put ourselves in trouble, and then we put the other person in trouble, and then the other person disrespect us, and they say, oh, you disrespect me and my opinion, and I start getting angry, and then the other person get angry, and then I get rage. From the beginning, if I would have stopped getting involved in something which doesn't relate to me, it has nothing to do with me, I would be able to stop all of these problems. Allahumma wa antaqni bil huda. So if I'm mindful of my talk, I only talk where I think I can guide. I only say where I, where I think my word can be influential. One of the reasons why some people, some of the parents, they don't have influence because they talk a lot. Well, not only parents, kids, everybody. We talk a lot. When we say something good, people are confused. If this is good thing he's saying or this is bad thing. If you, if you meet scholars, not me as a sheikh, no. Ulama, awliya Allah. You don't see them talking a lot. One word, two words, five words, ten words maximum. But those five words, because they were silence, they thought about these five words, and the effect of these five words can change a person completely. It has its own effect. People who have been to our maraj, next to our maraj, or awliya Allah, you see, couple of words, one minute, two minutes, five minutes talk, but that sets the guideline. I went to Ayatollah Sadiq al Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life and the life of our Maraja. I told him many times, I went to Qom and I told him, Sayyidina, advise me. He said, three advices. Two no's, one yes. Very simple, very basic, but very, very, very essential, important, needed for everybody. I went there many times, like after six months, I go to him, I said, Sayyidina, advise me. He will say, two no's, one yes. Should I tell you the two no's and yes? Alhamdulillah, some people want. If you want, let's have a loud salawat. He says, La al tahayyur. Never be undecided. Majority of our life spent and it's wasted for us to be undecided between two things. Should I get married or not? Should I get married to this person or not? Should I buy this house or not? Should I buy this car or not? Should I get into this business or not? Should I start this career or not? Should I take this uh, uh, education, this major or not? 
yes, no, yes, no. We're always undecided between two things. And you see a lot of us, we're staying, okay, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And we waste our time. He says, la let tahayyur. Never be undecided. Make a decision, put two plus two together, write pros and cons, move on. Take one route. And basically how I can analyze it, if it was right, alhamdulillah, you didn't waste your time taking that path. And if it was wrong, you made, you saw, you, you faced a dead block, problem, challenges that this thing is not yours, you come back and you take the right, right path. This is it. But we stay undecided in everything. La la tahayyur. La lil yas. Never lose hope. Never lose hope. Never lose hope in anything. Don't lose hope in your, in your wife. Don't lose hope in your husband. Don't lose hope in your ch children. Don't lose hope in your business. Don't lose hope in your education. Don't lose hope in everything. Don't lose hope in the community. Some people come and say, Sheikh, you know, our Imam Barga is this Imam Barga, and other Imam Barga. There is no hope. We keep saying, do this thing. There is no hope. We cannot do anything. Never lose hope. We have not been taught by Ahl al-Bayt to lose hope. Never. Never be undecided. I want to do, I'm, I'm going to do bed. I've heard the Shaykh said, before we go to the bed, if we do, Hadith says, if we do wudu and then go to sleep, Allah sends angels around our bed. They do ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us until the morning. That's ibadah. Ah, I'm on the bed. Should I do wudu? Yes, no. Ah, yes, no. Don't be undecided. When it comes to do something good, don't go back to your act. Just do it. As soon as you start thinking about it, shaitan comes. It's okay. One night you miss it. Don't worry about it. There is tomorrow. Just do one istighfar. Never be undecided when it comes to the good. Should I pay on the day of Eid donation that I have to pay? Yes, no. Yeah. Just pay it. Don't let it come back to you when it's good act that needs to be done. La'ala tahayyur. La'ala yas. Never lose hope. Third, yes to mushkilat. Always say yes to problems. Don't run away from problems. How many of us we try, we try and run away from problems? I'm not going to raise my hand because I don't. Alhamdulillah, until today. Chase and look after the problems. The more problems, the more you will be enhanced. The more problems in business, the, more, the higher you get. The more problem that you have within the community, family, society, you get higher and higher and higher. Problems are like ladders that, ladder that you can go up. No problems, no enhancement. No problem, no test, nothing, you're not going to be elevated. Yes to problems. Sheikh, getting married and school is problems. Have that problem. You will be successful in marriage and you will be successful in school. I'm doing it. Sheikh, marriage and kids and stuff, I had last semester, by the will of Allah, blessing of Allah and Ahl Bayt. I'm married, not that I was married, I'm married. I have four kids, by Allah's blessing, and I was taking six courses in the university, 18 credit. I used to go on the Mondays and Wednesdays. Eight in the morning, I leave the house, I come back eight at night. Six courses, one after one after one. Was it easy? Nope. Probably half of my hair, I lost it because of that last semester. But that's throughout the difficulties that we will be enhanced. Through time of difficulties that we will be elevated. We will learn at the time of difficulties. Find me someone who got financially, spiritually, religiously, physically, they got to the highest level by living a comfortable life, having everything. Find me one individual. One. Look at all of these people, non-religious. Tony Robbins. Look at his life. Read his life. He has a good books. He has good books. Read it. He said, I started from the place that I didn't know. I had to sell my belonging to get some food to eat. And right now he's a billionaire. All the people who reached where they reached, they reached problems. So see, he gave me three statements. La al yas, never lose hope. Never be undecided. Yes to problems. Three words. How much those words affect me and influence me throughout my life with my kids with my wife with my family with my community with my lectures with my traveling never lose hope keep going forward i tell you the position that i'm in every day i should lose hope in a lot of things the amount of problems that alhamdulillah by the blessing of allah i face on a daily basis on hourly basis on minute basis 
I don't know how I'm doing it, but it's Allah's, Allah's and Ahlul Bayt's blessing that I'm able to survive until today. Three words by a scholar that is with wisdom puts you on the right path. Allahumma wantaqni bil huda. Oh Allah puts guidance into my speech. Action plan. From today, needs practice. Pra practice makes... Are you guys with me? Practice makes... Perfect. If I want to be able to control my speech, so today I was saying, for example, between six to 10,000 words, tomorrow I'm going to make it 5,000 words. I make sure when I'm about to say something, either has benefit for me in dunya and akhirah by saying it, or has a benefit for that person. If not, why should I say it? Next segment. وَأَلْهِمْنَ taqwa. O Allah, inspire me with piety. Taqwa. Taqwa, compared to all of our wajibat, has, doesn't have a limit. Our wajibat, salah, 17 rak'ah a day. Ramadan, fasting, 30 days of Ramadan. Hajj, one time in your lifetime. All our wajibat has limits. Khums, 20%. Zakat, this percent. Everything has a limit. When it comes to Quran and piety, Allah doesn't put any condition. Doesn't put any limit. Chapter 64, verse 16. فَاتَّقُوا مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ So fear Allah. Have piety as much as you can. There is no limit. That okay, if I reach this level of piety, this is it. I have reached it. We need piety all the way until our last breath. Because shaitan is with us all the way until our last breath. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ سُورَةُ التَّغَابٌ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Be God-fearing people as much as you can. I have this level of piety, always room for improvement. I'm here, always higher and higher and higher I can go piety. There is no limit how much God-fearing I can be. And there is no end to it. The end, when they put us, they say, إِنَّا لِلَّهُ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We call, we, we announce, dead Sheikh Mustafa dead that time piety stops I cannot be any more God feeling that stops I'm age 70 Alhamdulillah Sheikh make sure your lectures are good for the youth because us we are like a nail into the wall we won't change who said so who guarantees that mindset when I hear this from the older I get a little bit scary I fear that brother don't say like that because shaitan is coming to you definitely so he believes his faith, his iman is secure from me. It's not. It's not. Even if we reach the amount of worship that shaitan worshiped Allah 6,000 years, one sin, this is it. So don't think, Alhamdulillah, I'm 60, 70, 80, 90. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, we hear something, some hadith. This is it. I mean, what else can we do? Nope. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. Put the effort. It needs practice. In Ramadan, alhamdulillah. By the blessing of Allah and Ahlul Bayt, we, our level of piety and fear in God increased. Didn't? Yes. B, say, say yes, so I know inshallah it has increased. Yes. When we say no, I say okay, maybe they're doing something. So it has increased. We have to keep the spirit. Whatever we did in Ramadan that increased our piety, we became mindful of what we said, we became mindful of our action, we observed ourselves, this mindfulness should go all the way until next Ramadan. We should try. And Allah, the beauty of the mercy of Allah, Allah rewards us based on our trying. Based on? Based on trying. Where do we learn this? Chapter 53, verse 39. We know this verse. And that nothing belongs to man except what he strives for. 
I make the intention and I do sa'i. I strive to keep the piety high. I strive to keep my tongue shut, my mouth shut, unless I have something to, do, to say which is good for me and satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I try to stay pious. I try my best. Trying is doing it. I try. I keep trying and trying and trying. Allah says, and then, and that He will soon be shown His endeavor. Then He will be rewarded for it with the fullest reward. The beauty of it. When we do sa'i, if it, I want, I put the limit. Somebody came to me and it was a wrong statement to say that we want to become like you, Sheikh. This is a completely wrong statement. We want to become like Ahl al Bayt. I put the Ahl al Bayt, the highest, as the goal. And I strive, for example, there is million steps toward Ahl al-Bayt. For example, I take the first step on the first step. Tomorrow, I made a decision. The teachings of Ahl al-Bayt, the five books that Shaykh is burning, his lung for us to get it and download and read it. I download and I read the first hadith and I want to be good and I strive this first day. Tomorrow night, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un. Allah says with the fullest reward, you will be rewarded because you strived. Allah gives me the million level of rewards that I even if I would have reached it, He would give it to me. I strive for that highest Allah will reward me. In dunya before akhirah. Taqwa, piety needs striving, needs effort, needs mindfulness. Needs our energy and active mind into it for us to be piety. Not like this we can just live a pious life. No. Nobody has reached the highest level of piety living a normal life. Through the challenges that we discussed, the time of imtihan and point of, this, point of imtihan, that's where our piety will flourish. How many of you guys have heard about Ibn Sirin, who has the ahlam, the interpretation of dreams? Ibn Sirin, it's one of our scholars that he was given the knowledge of interpretation of dreams. And there is a book of it. I'm not sure if it's translated into English or Urdu, but in Farsi and Arabic it is. Tafsir Ahlam Ibn Sirin, the interpretation of Ibn Sirin. This individual, at the time of test, again, piety comes. I'm sitting in a home in my room from day until night. There is no haram to commit, alhamdulillah, I'm pious. No, at the time of test, our piety increases. Shows. Ibn Sirin, pay attention, all of us. Each of us differently. He was a young individual, handsome individual. Handsome, very handsome. He used to be working at a selling fabrics. One female, a girl, came to buy fabrics she fell in love with him. One eye, that's why Allah and Ahl bayt say that should be closed. Hadith says, an eye looking at haram is like a poison arrow into the heart. When I see, I yearn. When I see, heart sends a message, email, we want to get this. I want to get this. She sees him, he, she, feels in lo she falls in love, I want to have you. Plans, plan, plan, plan. This Ibn Sirin, religious, pious. She tells, she goes, wealthy, she goes and she buys a lot of fabrics and she tells him that I cannot carry this fabrics. It's not a fiction made in Sheikh Mustafa's story. No, this is within our history. The book is there. Everybody, it's famous person Ibn Sirin and his interpretation of dreams. She said to him, can you please bring these bags of fabrics that I have bought to my house? He said, okay. I carry it. He went to the house, by the house. He wants to put it. He, she said, this is very heavy. Can you bring it inside the house for me? He said, okay. She ta he takes her, the, the fabrics, inside the house. As soon as he gets into the house, she locks the door and she said, I want a Jew, not the fabrics. I want haram. Here is the piety, the test of piety comes to, to put on a table. How will you pass this test? He knows what Ahl al-Bayt have taught and what Rasul Nabi Allah Yusuf has done. What we will do in this situation? Shaykh, door is closed. 
everything haram, astaghfirullah. This is tawfiq, it's a blessing of Allah to come to us. Door is closed, nothing has to do. Smart. He, she said, if you don't obey me and fulfill my desire, I will scream for the neighbors to come that you will try to rape me. What can you do? He said, okay, sure. Let me go to the bathroom and I'll come out, inshallah. What can we say? Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja. He goes to the bathroom, he does his business, and then he takes the feces, he puts it all on his face, on his body, all the najasat, he puts it on his face, and hand and body. He comes outside, he said, okay, I'm ready. He wants to save himself from haram. She's disgusted, she starts screaming, here's, here's the key, just leave the house, you're disgusting. He leaves the house, there was a river next to it. He went outside, he, did, he washed himself, did ghusl. Allah gave him the knowledge of our interpretation of dreams. When we become pious, when our piety is put at test, we show to Allah, because of you, I will forbid from committing this evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give. I want to reach financially highest, piety highest. But Allah, when it comes to the time of test, uh -huh, I can't. That's why we need to do dua and strive. Allahumma wa antiqni bil huda. Inspire me wa anhimni wa alhimni taqwa. Let's have a loud salawat. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج everybody all of us together at the time of adhan at the time of acceptance of our prayers we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved imam بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك ما شاء الله في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا صلوات